Good morning, and thank you for joining me on the Path to Liberty. This is the Fast Friday edition of the show for October 4th, 2019. Now, when most people talk about the Founding Fathers, they're generally just referring to a small group of people like Madison, Jefferson, Hamilton, Washington, maybe Adams, Franklin, Payne, Henry, but not much beyond that. And I know everyone probably has another one or two, but really, if we're strictly speaking about the founding fathers or the founders, the, the people, the number is much larger than that. And I tend to actually look at this group even more broadly. We can look to the old revolutionaries and go all the way back to the important figures at the time of the Stamp Act crisis in the 1760s, all the way through the ratification of the Bill of Rights some two and a half decades later to understand the foundations of what the people of the several states approved and set up going forward. Now, today I wanna to introduce you to a guy named James Iredell from North Carolina, who is really influential on issues like federalism and sovereignty. But before getting to that, my name is Michael Bolden. We broadcast live every single Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 9.30 a.m. Pacific time from here in my home office and studio in downtown Los Angeles for the 10th Amendment Center. Our live broadcasts are video editions. We also have archived editions on other platforms, plus audio-only podcast editions. You find all of this, all the ways to follow us, all of our previous episodes, reference links, show notes, ways to subs subscribe, our social channels, email newsletter, and even how you can pitch in for as little as two bucks a month in our membership program and support our work. You can find all of that stuff over at 10thamendmentcenter.com slash path to liberty, all spelled out, 10thamendmentcenter.com slash path to liberty. And I do want to point out how grateful I am for you spending some time with me today. I really, really appreciate it. Whether it's your first episode here or you've been with us since day one, we've been doing it a little over a year, maybe 14 months or so. We're reaching more and more people every single day. So every time you smash a like button or uh, get a notification or share a link or leave a comment, it really helps us spread the word because these algorithms on these platforms are very easily triggered. So each action you take tells them to show the program to more people. Again, thank you, thank you, thank you. I can't thank you enough for joining me here today. But since it's the Fast Friday edition of the show, I promise not to take too much of your time I want to see if I can knock this out in about 10-ish minutes. We'll see. Tomorrow in history, October 5th, 1751, this guy, James Iredell, was born. This is somebody that my buddy Dave Benner, who's been writing for the TAC for a long time now. Uh, he's a great blogger, writer, historian. He's got books, all kinds of great stuff. But Dave calls Iredell his favorite ever Supreme Court justice. He was appointed to the Supreme Court by George Washington. In 1774, and this is a blog uh, that Dave wrote, a short blog about Iredell's birthday that we published last year. Dave is talking about this important pamphlet that Iredell wrote in 1774. He was 23 years old at that time, really young and was already being considered a legal expert. And the pamphlet's called To the Inhabitants of Great Britain. Dave writes, it espoused his constitutional arguments against the British concept of parliamentary sovereignty. This principle, which was incorporated into the British unwritten constitution following the Glorious Revolution, I guess that was like uh, mid to late 16, 1600s, held that parliamentary policies superseded any sectional power balances held by Britain's colonies and its king. Now, sovereignty is incredibly important. And as a general rule, the short version is sovereignty is final, ultimate, supreme authority. The final decision maker is the one who holds sovereignty. Now, all through history, up until this time, Sovereignty was always in the hands of government. I mean, be it a king or a queen or a small council, or like in the British Constitution, the unwritten one, of course, uh, the British Parliament. So sovereignty was always part of government. But in the American system, no king, no government, no legislature, no council, none of it. None of them were, were sovereign. It was the people of the several states that were meant to be sovereign. And the people of the several states hold that final authority and Iredell was very prominent in this historic 
transition. Of course, he wasn't the only one. We know in the years to come, we heard talk of sovereignty by many leading thinkers. Here in 1803, St. George Tucker, in his famous uh, book, he wrote, every act, when they when government does things outside the Constitution, he says, every such act is, quote, treason against the sovereignty of the people. Or Tench Cox, who I've mentioned a few times on the show this year, the sovereignty of the people is never to be infringed or destroyed. Sovereignty of the people. This was a new thing. And Iridel was at the forefront of this at 23 years old in 1774. Now, as an aside, while a lot of people focus on the sovereignty aspect of that pamphlet, I think Iridel was also a leading proponent of federalism very early on. Uh, formulating the Federalist structure that ended up getting put into the Constitution. And he had even talked about the, the colonies well before seceding, well before the War of Independence, as states. He, he said the British Empire was made up of several states. He also pointed out that each state had its own legislature and that while Parliament or the king, the far-off government could deal with the empire's concerns, but that the local legislature dealt with local concerns. Sounds very similar to the structure that the founders and ratifiers gave up or set up. Calling the colony states was a pretty big deal. Dave talked about this a bit further in another article. I will link this in the show notes. He put it this way. Oh, I should pull this up. On the question of whether acts of British Parliament should be binding on American colonies, Iredale made his opinion unmistakable. This is one of the best quotes of anybody. Quote, this is not the condition of freemen, but of slaves. It is the very definition of slavery. The notion that you have your own local governing body, however you decide to form it in your own area, and then you have to bend to the will of a far off supposed sovereign, according to Iredale, 23 years old, leading legal expert of the time at this point, called this the very definition of slavery. Didn't pull any punches. Dave goes on. On the argument that two independent legislatures, the British Parliament and the colonial legislatures, would clash on every issue, he mentioned that each legislature was established, quote, on a separate scale and employed around different objects. Again, very familiar to what the founders as a whole set up and what the ratifiers approved under the Constitution. Dave goes on, therefore, British Parliament could legislate for the empire, but should not interfere in the local confined matters of the colonies. Doing so, as Iredell told us, is the very definition of slavery. Now, Iredell was incredibly consistent in his, in his views. Very, very consistent from early on in that pamphlet to the ratification debates, primarily in New York, or I mean, uh, North Carolina. Again, similar. And then as uh, a member of the Supreme Court, as a Supreme Court justice, he held these same positions. Here he is in the North Carolina ratifying convention talking the same way. The general government, he writes, or he said, will have the protection and management of the general interests of the United States. The local and particular interests of the different states are left to their respective legislatures. That sounds almost the same as when he was talking about a different but similar situation with the British Empire and the colonies, or as he referred to them, the various states that made up that particular empire. So consistent in that approach again. Now back over to Dave, he again goes a little bit further in this article about his uh, his his uh, work in support of the Constitution or ratification of the Constitution in North Carolina. He says his most significant contribution to North Carolina's ratification campaign was his insistence that the state governments would retain their present judicial authority under the new model. He did this by describing the Constitution as an instrument that prevented the federal government from encroaching upon issues outside of its own defined jurisdiction. This is how Iredell put it, quote, when Congress passes a law consistent with the Constitution, it is to be binding on the people. If Congress, under pretense of executing one power, in fact, should in fact usurp another, 
they will violate the Constitution. Hmm. Sounds very interesting. Very familiar. And this article from M.E. Bradford that I will also link goes even further covering some of these views. And Emmy writes, Iridell, as defender of the Constitution, affirms that, quote, no power can be exercised but what is expressly given. That's the Tenth Amendment's foundation right there. The foundation, that's how Jefferson referred to the Tenth Amendment, as the foundation of the Constitution. So this was a very important principle that Iridell was talking about. Iridell goes on, what is not enumerated is not granted. So if it hasn't been delegated in the Constitution, they're not allowed to do it straightforward, but important stuff. And this one I really, really like. He says, any citizen with the Constitution in his hands may see if a power claimed is enumerated. If it is not, he will know it to be a usurpation. Again, talking about delegated and reserved powers, but also pointing out that you don't have to be a legal expert like James Iredell. Anyone can read the document and look to see if the power is delegated to the federal government, and if they do it and it isn't delegated, they are stealing. Usurping power is theft of power. My favorite quote ever from James Iredell is this one. Any law not warranted by the Constitution is a bare-faced usurpation. Well, I hope you enjoyed the show, and more importantly, and most importantly, I hope you learned something. I really, really appreciate you spending some time with me today. I hope you have an awesome weekend. If you support what we're doing, again, smash the like button, hit subscribe, get bell notifications on YouTube. If you're on iTunes or another podcast platform, the reviews help a ton. And I've noticed a lot more coming in lately, so I'm very grateful for that. Thank you so very much for everyone who's been leaving reviews and all the positive feedback. It helps us out a lot. I hope you have an awesome weekend. We'll be back next week, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 9.30 a.m. Pacific time for more episodes of The Path to Liberty. Thanks again. Have a great weekend.